Here's some things you should know before getting started with colour pencil. G'day and welcome to my art channel Brushes with Beck. Today I want to share with you six tips for using colour pencils and things to consider before you even pick up a pencil for the first time. But before we get into that, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for all my future videos. Let's get started. Tip number one is choose the right materials. Now, this includes not only your colour pencils, but your paper as well. Now the problem with this tip is I can't just tell you, you need to buy these pencils and you need to buy such and such paper. It doesn't work like that, I'm afraid. When I say choose the right materials, I mean make sure you're choosing a paper that can properly take colour pencil and make sure you're choosing a colour pencil that best suits what you're trying to draw and your drawing style. And those are sorts of things that can take some time to discover as you practice with colour pencil and get better with it. But in terms of paper, mainly you have a choice between smooth and textured paper. If you've watched my channel for a while, you know I do have a preference for textured paper. But within that, there are cheap crappy papers, there are decent mid-range papers, and then there are very fancy expensive papers. You don't need to go super fancy, super expensive, but you do need to buy a decent quality paper. Paper can make all the difference because if you don't have a decent paper, it's not going to accept the colour pencil properly, and then you will just struggle the entire way through the piece that you are trying to draw. So make sure you get a decent quality paper. This can be a hot pressed watercolour paper or a smooth Bristol sort of paper of some decent weight. In terms of colour pencils, this is a minefield. There is no best colour pencil. There are different, very good brands of colour pencil and you need to sort of do some research into those brands. There's differences between wax and oil based and just find something that you think is going to work for you, even if you only buy a couple of colours of each just to experiment with. Now, I know that was a very long first tip and I do apologise, but they do get shorter from here on out. Because like I said, in terms of choosing the right materials, there is no one answer. So just keep that in mind as you start with colour pencil, that just because what you are doing at the beginning isn't working for you and you're not enjoying it, doesn't mean that there isn't an option for you that you won't find easier or that you won't enjoy more. Tip number two for this video is to keep your pencils sharp. If you're working with a sharp pencil, colour lay down becomes much easier, especially on smooth paper. Working with a blunt pencil on smooth paper is just fighting to lay colour down. It makes details easier and it's also easier to fill in the tooth of the paper if you've got a sharper pencil. Now working on a textured paper, like when I work on Claire Fontaine pastel mat, I find for my base layers, a sharp pencil isn't as important because the texture on that paper grips the pencil so well that a blunt pencil doesn't matter for those under layers. Now as a second part to that tip, when you are sharpening your pencil with a small handheld sharpener, make sure you are rotating the sharpener around the pencil not rotating the pencil in the sharpener. This reduces the stress on the pencil and helps prevent breaking the core and splitting the pencil barrel and it will just help your pencils last longer. Moving on to tip number three is to swatch out your colours. So many times I see people they're struggling to they're struggling to choose colours for their work. They don't know where to turn. They don't know what to do, how to approach a piece. Now keep in mind that the colour of the pencil barrel or the end of the pencil where it's supposed to reflect the colour that the pencil is doesn't always actually reflect the true colour of that pencil. Now in some cases it is quite close or extremely accurate and there are other cases where that colour on the barrel of the pencil is really far from what the actual colour lay down of that pencil is. And this is why it is so crucial to make sure you swatch out all of your pencils before you just start going in and using them because that colour variation can be quite strong and it's not so much 
it's green on the end of the pencil and you use it and it's red. It's nothing like that. It's more about it might be, well, for example, I have a Derwent Colorsoft pencil called Iced Blue. The blue color swatch on the end of that pencil is quite a dark blue, but when you lay it down, it is a pale iced blue. And the color on the pencil is at least somewhere between that color and Ultramarine from Polychromos and nowhere near close to the color that's on the barrel of the pencil. So swatching out your colors, it A, helps you to learn your colors, and B, it gives you a swatch chart to refer from. And both of these things make selecting what colors to use so much easier in the, in the long run. You have a chart you can refer to, to either hold up to your photo or your computer screen, or just to hold up to your drawing to compare colors with. And then you also have a better idea of what each color goes down like when you use them. And keep in mind, it's also good to do those swatch charts on paper that you actually use to do your color pencil drawings on. I have a tendency to not do that. I just use a decent color pencil paper for swatching, but I'm comfortable enough that I don't feel that I need to swatch out my pencils on the different types of paper that I'm using. Moving on to tip number four, is to keep a light hand. So when you finally get down to drawing your colour pencil artwork, or colouring in your book, or whatever it is you're doing with colour pencils, don't press too hard. Pressing too hard, too early, can ruin everything. So pressing hard in itself is not necessarily bad because Pressing too hard to get a nice solid colour and to blend things out is actually a technique in itself called burnishing. However, pressing too hard too early when you are trying to layer up colours and starting in the beginnings of your piece and want to put more texture and colours in over the top is very bad. When you press too hard on a paper, you are actually flattening the texture of that paper. Even if the paper is a smooth Bristol paper, it still has a little bit of texture. That texture is what actually holds the colour and allows your pencil pigment to lay down on the paper. If you press too hard with your pencil, you remove that texture and smooth it out, which means you can no longer apply more layers of colour over the top. So definitely keep that in mind as you are starting with colour pencil. It's always better to start with a light hand and you can build up that colour slowly over time rather than going in too hard too early and not being able to do what you wanted to achieve because you've limited yourself from what that paper can do for you. Tip number five for this series is experiment. Find what works for you. It is all well and good to watch other people on YouTube or to ask other people advice because I do that myself. I watch other artists, I get other artists opinions, I find out, you know, what are good pencils, what are good papers, what can I try, but I don't take their word on it that this is the best paper or these are the best pencils. Because there are many good papers and many good pencils, like I said earlier, and you need to find what works for you. I like the results that smooth paper give, and I can get good results on them, but I don't really enjoy using it. I much prefer to use a textured paper, such as Cancer Matons or Claire Fontaine Pastel Mat. And Pastel Mat is an amazing paper. I absolutely love it. But there are people that absolutely hate it because it's just not for them. They don't understand it. To them, they understand smooth paper better and they enjoy using that. So there are different papers, there are different pencil types, there are different blending methods, whether that's dry blending with burnishing and layering, or whether it's blending with solvents or using a powdered blender. There are so many options when you are creating with colour pencil. You don't have to stick with one type of thing. There are no rules when it comes to art. You can use your colour pencils how you want to use them to achieve results that you want to achieve. So don't be afraid to experiment. Try new things, try new techniques, surfaces, different pencil types and brands and just see what works for you. Because you might start out with something and it might not be working, but don't give up on it, just, just keep trying something else. 
And lastly, the final tip for this video is don't be afraid to make mistakes. And secondly, don't give up if you do. Mistakes happen. That's just a fact of life. We are human. We're going to make mistakes at some point, no matter how practiced we are at something. So in terms with color pencil, if you're going in with light layers, mistakes can be more easily corrected or worked around. I have made many mistakes in some of my art pieces. And the best thing I have found to do for my learning is to keep working on that piece through the mistakes and so then I can work out how I can fix those mistakes by actually doing. If I stop every time I make a mistake and restart, I might just make the same mistake again and not be able to work past it again. At least for me, what works for me, again, this may not work for you, is if you make a mistake, yes, it sucks, and you think, oh, I've wasted all this time, but keep working on it and see what happens. See if you can find a way to make it work for you. And a lot of the time, people who are looking at our artwork aren't even going to notice that mistake, even if we can still see it after we finish the piece. So with all that in mind, I do hope this video has been helpful to you. For now, that's it for this video. Please give a comment down below if you've got any more color pencil tips that you would like to know about, things that you want to know as a beginner, leave those questions or comments down below and I will hopefully include them in another video in the future. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, please subscribe to my channel and I will see you again next week for another one. Stay creative.